Tai TV. My name is Jordan and this is Chi Chi. We're so glad that you can be joining us again today. What theme is it this week, Chi Chi? This week we're building box forts. And here's one we made earlier. Um, we're going to do lots of different things today with forts and boxes from Bethan's challenge and to our object lesson later on. We're going to be telling a little bit of a story, aren't we, Gigi? Yeah. Let's go! go. It's amazing. I love our fort. We've even got like a nice window here, which you guys can look through as well. Um, but I think we need to do something else. What should we do next? I think we should do a pillow fight. A too. pillow fight? In a fort? Surely that means the fort is going to fall down. I don't think so. Okay. It's on you. Okay. Ready? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no. boxes right i think now we've broken it we should probably rebuild it otherwise we're not going to be able to tell a story later so now we've got to rebuild the fort yeah. what should these guys check out while we're rebuilding they should check out beth Ann's challenge katie's quiz and sarah's crafts okay let's get rebuilding okay <laughs> hi guys welcome back Hey, who turned out the lights? Judah? Really, that Judah, he is so mischievous. Today we're going to be making a jam jar lantern and you can decorate these however you want. One here, I've used hearts and I've covered the jar with hearts. Another one, I've done an under the sea. Uh, with fishies swimming around. So to make your jam jar lantern, you will need a clean jam jar. Some coloured tissue paper and some PVA glue. And I've mixed a little bit of water in it to make the PVA glue a little more runny. Now, start to paint your jam jar with the PVA glue. Next, we need to take our coloured tissue paper. I've just ripped this up into little shapes just to make an abstract pattern and then you, can, you start to place your tissue paper onto the jar. 
and you continue all the way round until your jar is covered. Once you've covered your jam jar with your coloured tissue paper, leave it to dry. When dry, give it a final coat of PVA glue. And there it is, your jam jar lantern. And you can put, I've used some little, uh, little LED lights and fill the jars there, or you could use a little battery operated candle to put inside your jam jar lantern. kids uh, missing you all can't wait to see you all again at tribe oh ice cream which one which one do i have do i have the blue or do i have the pink anyway i'm sure whichever one i have i'm gonna love it so see you soon love you all bye hi i'm katie i have done a little quiz that i think you will love so grab a piece of paper and a pen and let's have some fun. There are five questions in this quiz. So yeah, let's get started. First question is, what was the names of Mo uh, Jesus' mum and dad? Question two, where was Jesus born? Question three, what was the name of the first man and woman to live on earth? Question four, who was asked by God to build a big boat? Question five, who got swallowed by a big fish? Okay, for the answers now. For question one, the question was, what was the names of Jesus' mum and dad? The answer was, Mary and Joseph. Question two, where was Jesus born? The answer was, Bethlehem. Question three, what was the name of the first man and woman to live on earth? The answer was, Adam and Eve. Question four, who was asked by God to build a big boat? The answer was Noah. Question five, who got swallowed by a big fish? The answer was Jonah. I hope you all enjoyed the quiz. Can't wait to see you back at church again. See you soon, bye. are building a fort. This will be judged by Fiona Taylor. One minute timer. You'll hear it. Time up, stop there, stop there, stop there. <laughs> this is Beth Ann's fault. Beth Ann? Yeah. Do you want to just come out a second and talk us through it? No, I don't. Actually. Are you sure? Yeah. I think you should. No, I'm quite comfortable. As you can see, she's, she's built nicely here. Go get Fiona, quickly. It fell. I moved and it fell. Okay. I'm just putting it the way that it This was. is an extra five seconds. I'm just putting it the way that it... <laughs> Fiona, welcome to Tribe TV. This is Beth Ann's fort. Beth Ann, talk us through your fort. So, it was meant to be a lot bigger than this, Fiona. <laughs> In complete honesty. But this is, is the roof. It's to protect me from any asteroids. 
It okay. may come in Space Rock and Jordan, who may attack. And this is this is my thought. And th there was a bit here, but it's fallen over. Okay. It's a bit of a failure. I'm not going to lie to you, but I put my heart into it. Okay, Bethan. Does it rely on you staying in there to stay up? No. Let's let's <laughs> test this. Come on, let's test it. Come out. <laughs> So Fiona is coming with me into my amazing fort. Look at this. It's a wow. solid wall. And look at this. It's got a little doorway. You can come stand in it if you want, Fiona. Look, it's got, it's completely shielded. I use the wall to save resources. Um, I can hide and I can look through here and I can see where Beth Ann's is. I can hide with this on my head as a helmet. Um, look, we'll put it on you so then there everyone can oh, see. Thanks. Look, it's a nice little helmet. It's going to keep you safe. Uh, so Fiona, who has won the fort battle, bearing in mind hers is on the floor? I think I might have to say on this occasion that Jordan, I think you have won this challenge. Yes! Winner! Nine, nine, five, nine, six. Five. I won the Mario Kart last week. It's nine, six. Nine, six. Coming back, coming back. Fuming, I am. I hope you guys enjoyed that bit. Now I'm here to tell you about a story about a dragon called Roy. Roy was a dragon from Dulwich, and he occasionally came to Utoxta to look for goats. But Utoxta was out of goats, and Roy had no food left, and he was really hungry. So he flew into Tribe TV Studios, and behind the fort were lots and lots of sheep. Roy realised if he could get into the fort, he could get the goat, and if he could get the goat, his belly would stop rumbling. He tried to fly over the wall, and he tried to fly through the wall, but none of them worked. He tried to go through the window, he tried to go under the wall, but none of them worked. So he sat outside the castle and began to cry. But someone from Tribe TV was feeling really, really kind, and realised maybe Roy was sad because he was just a little hungry. So they decided to take him a go and Roy began to smile. See, the person from Tribe TV was a little bit scared. He didn't like dragon, and Roy was really scary, but he still knew he could be loving and kind. And so he took the goat to Roy the dragon, and Roy lived happily ever after. So Gigi, that was such a cool story. I have not heard that story before, and I did not know that there was a dragon that lived in Dovridge called Roy. Yeah. Hi, Roy. Look, yeah. here he is. He's coming to say hi. And um, how was your goat slash sheep? Was it good? Good. I'm glad. Uh, so, Chi Chi, like, why did you tell us that story today? I told that story because today we were learning about the Valley of Love. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Now we want you to check out this chat that Jordan had with Pete about love. So, hey guys, I'm with Pete and Pete is going to share with us a little bit about a topic that's really important <laughs> to us at Tribe TV and that is the topic of love. Yep. Ooh la la. <laughs> no, probably not ooh la la, but love. So Pete, like, what is love? Can you tell us what like love is to you? Um, love to me is, it's like almost an unconditional thing. It, it happens like if somebody you know is hurting, you want to give them compassion, you want to care about them. But also it's the other side of if, if somebody's hurt you and you you don't judge them, you don't be angry back, you just love them because that's probably what they need. They're just angry and in a bad place. That's awesome, that's awesome. I think it's a great, that, a great definition of what love is. It's caring for someone regardless of how they treat you, really, yeah. isn't it? It's like, yeah. if someone's been mean to you, you still try and be kind to them, you still try and help them out because they just may be having a bad day. Yeah. You don't know that, you just gotta try and treat them with love. Okay, so that's awesome, Peter. So can you give us like an example in the Bible of what love would look like? Um, well, Jesus had lots of examples. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, but I think the greatest example is, is when he gave up his life for us and he sacrificed his whole life for every one of us to cover our sins and basically to give us eternal life and just... The thought of somebody sacrificing themselves for everyone, just that is just the ultimate love. Definitely, definitely. I think 
you can't get any bigger than that like someone literally laying their life down have you ever watched one of those films like where there's been like something traveling really fast towards one person maybe yeah. it's like a train or maybe it's a bullet yeah. and all of a sudden one person has ran and rugby tackled the other yeah. person out of the way and like taken the hit themselves that's yeah, like so what jesus did in the bible right like totally, he, yeah, he he it stood in our place as we were going to be uh, hit with sin and we were going to be hit with like the uh, consequences of sin like not yeah. spending time with God not knowing his love not knowing his goodness Jesus came and like took us out of the path yeah. of sin set us free from all that baggage yeah. so that we can know his amazing love I, it, yeah I think that's an amazing story so like what does that mean for you as a person knowing that Jesus has like taken your place I think the main thing when you loved truly loved like that like somebody dying for you it makes you feel accepted and it makes you feel calm, relaxed, just joyful because so somebody was willing to die for you and gave up everything for you. It's just, it just brings you such joy and happiness. That's awesome. And does that change how you interact with other people? Definitely. I mean, so you might have brothers or sisters who really annoy you and you might have to say, pray to God, say, look, they really annoy me. Help me to be kind to them because you died for me. I want to be nice to them, even though they're not being nice to me. And I think that's the key because God is love. He wants us to love people. So if you're struggling with it, just pray to him and ask him for help with it. Definitely. And that's the cool thing about Jesus is we can we can call up, call him up every day within yeah. through prayer and say, God, like, this person's really annoying me, but I want to love them because you tell me to love them. See, yeah. what the, that's the cool thing about Jesus is that he, his two rules are based in love. He yeah. says, love God first and then love other people, love your neighbor as yourself. And yeah. as Christians, as followers at Tribe, we have to love God first and love yeah. other people, even when they're annoying <laughs> and even when they're difficult and even when they smell and even when they look <laughs> weird and even if they put, support the wrong football team, yeah. we still have to call up them. So uh, that's awesome. So thanks so much, Pete, for coming into it and sharing with us a little bit about what love looks like. That's great. I um, really enjoyed being here, guys. Hope you're keeping well. Hey, Gigi, do you want to see my dragon impression? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Do you want impression? I don't know. Um... <laughs> Solid effort, well, then. well, thank you so much for joining us today at Try TV. We hope you enjoyed it. Chi Chi. Make sure to like and subscribe and watch all the videos on YouTube. Exactly right. So, guys, we'll see you next time. Have a great week. Praying for you. Bye.